all of this hit me about two weeks after I took that one pill. Mm -hmm. So um, just severe insomnia that wasn't helped by any medication, mm -hmm. uh, constant suicidal ideation, mm -hmm. um, constant like physical anxiety symptoms and like a, a big spike in all my like previous kind of anxiety issues. So like I was having panic attacks constantly. <laughs> Uh, severe like depression low low mood no motivation anhedonia like inability to feel things properly <laughs> like emotion at all uh yeah. brain fog an inability to concentrate or remember stuff properly mm -hmm. or think properly at all um and then yeah sexually not only was i like impotent at this point um so not just like you know, erectile dysfunction. Um, I watched my penis literally shrink in front of my eyes, basically. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, atrophy of the penis and, and the testicles. Bad testicular pain and penile pain, frequent mm -hmm. urination, mm -hmm. pain while I'm urinating. And like, yeah, and then the rest of my body, um, my heart rate my resting heart rate was just like seemed dangerously high it was just um and irregular heartbeat problems as well um complete like appetite suppression i couldn't eat at first um and my, my the weight just dropped off i lost like 10 kilograms in in a few weeks so many skin problems uh literally i had like some dry skin before this but then now i've just got full-blown seborrheic dermatitis it's crushing chronic fatigue mm -hmm. literally just feeling i mean i've been bedridden for most of the time for the last four months mm -hmm. like completely um stomach problems you know gi issues then often you know i've been told um oh well you know, you, this isn't post finasteride syndrome. This is just your mental health getting worse. And it's just like, no, it's very clearly not. And there's countless other symptoms going on. And right. also I can tell the difference it, between having a little, um, you know, some mental health issues and then a, a pill physically causing problems with the way your brain is working. And Merck and, and all these companies that give out the pills at the moment they're you know they're getting away with murder right now i mean literally in my opinion you know people are losing their lives to this drug all right what is going on guys this is mark millick with the moral medicine youtube channel today we are speaking to sam sam is a pfs patient who has had this for about four months now so sam thank you so much for joining us that's all right <laughs> it's important to yeah to speak about this stuff Absolutely, man. We really appreciate you being here. So, Sam, let's kind of start with this. We kind of, you know, ask the same questions throughout this, you know, these interviews. Uh, what was your life like before you got post finasteride syndrome? Um, yeah, I'd say it's, it was it was good. You know, I, I it wasn't without its problems, but um, I think I was probably taking it for granted, to be honest. I mean, I I have I've had like struggles with um, depression, and anxiety in the past. But I mean, you know, none of it really compares to my life now. Um, it's a whole different level. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Um, difficult, but but it was good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think for a lot of guys, you know, who uh, deal with depression and anxiety before they get this, it, it almost holds more weight that post finasteride syndrome is actually a real thing because this is a completely different feeling than having just regular depression or anxiety right uh because yeah. I've, I've had my bouts of depression and anxiety in the past too uh but this is this is nothing like that i mean especially when you have i don't know if you have anhedonia but complete anhedonia and bluntness yeah. of emotions um that's something that you can't even begin to describe to somebody who isn't going through this you know yeah not at all and yeah as well like with the if you if you tell anyone that you had you know issues with your mental health before um post finasteride syndrome then often, you know, I've been told, um, oh, well, you know, you, this isn't post finasteride syndrome. This is just your mental health getting worse. And it's just like, no, it's very clearly not. And there's countless other symptoms going on. And right. also, I can tell the difference it, between having a little, 
um, you know, some mental health issues and then a, a pill physically causing problems with the way your brain is working. Sure. Yeah. That's what's going on now. Right. I think it's the issue is that people are afraid to even be honest about any, you know, previous struggles they've had because they're going to be discredited and they're going to be yeah. told this isn't post asteroid syndrome. This is just your mental health getting worse. This is just your anxiety or depression picking up again. So, I mean, people are afraid to even be open and transparent about what they've experienced in the past because there's just so much discrediting that goes on in this community, unfortunately, you know? Yeah. So um, when did you decide to start taking finasteride and, and what was the purpose for it? Um, so in late 2021, I had some, I had like a hair transplant, basically. Um, I didn't need one. <laughs> I was just self-conscious about my hair. Um, it was it was such a small one as well. I literally just like moved my hairline down by like an inch or whatever. Um, I don't even know if it was that that much, but um, you know, it was um, it was something I did at the time um, that I was discussing with a dermatologist, and then they they brought up uh, finasteride, which I'd never heard of before, and um, they just yeah they they talked about it, said you know look into it. Um, it's amazing for hair loss. It works wonders for a lot of people, which mm -hmm. is is true. It can do right. it can do a lot for for some people. Um, but um, I, I went away and I looked into mm -hmm. it a bit, and yeah, there were some there were some horror stories, um, and it put it put me off a bit. Um, even though it was literally just like a few people on forums online, I definitely it was in it was in the back of my mind a bit. And then I, so I just I was like, oh, my hair loss isn't that bad. And he was only recommending it to me to go along with the the, the transplant I'd already had. Sure. Um, I'll just leave it. Maybe maybe I won't bother with it. And then my hair loss started to get sort of um, I don't know. It was just it was just happening a lot quicker um, the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. And so late February, um, I started kind of considering finasteride properly. And then I saw these online online pharmacies, you know, uh, the telehealth uh, companies. There's one called Manual, based in the UK, and yeah, they 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 give out um, finasteride to people. Um, you can just order it to your door, um, like candy, right? Yeah, like you get a prescription for it. Yeah, and um, I remember I filled out. Um, you had to fill out a quick questionnaire on their website. Um, before you could get the pills and um one of the one of the sections was um would you rather be given something that um i don't know i don't know how they worded it but it was like would you rather have something that would be more helpful for your for your hair loss or or something where there's no chance of having any side effects mm -hmm. and i and i was a bit concerned about side effects so i i i ticked the box that said i'd rather you know have i guess the medication that uh, where there's less chance of getting side effects right but they still sent me everything in the post they sent me finasteride they sent me minoxidil as well and they gave me sore palmetto shampoo to go with that um and they wanted me to use all, all they said you know use these in conjunction with each other every day sure uh, yeah 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 and yeah so that's how i that's how i got um finasteride so it yeah, it sounds like that question was kind of pointless though. It sounds like, you know, would you rather take the natural product where there's no side effects? Would you rather take the the prescription where there could be potential side effects? You chose, I'd rather take the product that won't give me side effects. And they still sent you finasteride, saw palmetto, which we also know, know is a five alpha reductase inhibitor, minoxidil. So it, it really made no difference, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe it's them trying to cover themselves, but I, yeah, I mean, potentially they still, yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and look, I, I can tell you right now, I mean, I went to the HEMS website and it was so easy for me to get my prescription for finasteride. I, I had to basically do a quick, like five minute questionnaire, take a few pictures of my scalp. I even questioned if I was even balding at that time. I had very, very minor hair loss that probably wasn't even detectable to the average person. And then a week later, I got this medication in the, in the mail, finasteride, uh, minoxidil, the combination, like you were saying. And, um, yeah, it, it took nothing. It was the easiest thing in the world to obtain, you know, and apparently yeah. I had, I, there wasn't even like a face-to-face -face consultation with a doctor. You know, they said a dermatologist reviewed my questionnaire and just decided that finasteride was the best route for me. I, it's just, it's ridiculous. So yeah. 
when you got the medication, um, I guess, when did you start taking it? And like, what was your experience taking it? Well, so I went, I went into it, you know, um, just thinking, oh, I'll, I'll give it a try. And, um, you know, I, I, I spoke to that dermatologist again before, before taking it. And they said, you know, oh, yeah, a very small amount of people experience uh, side effects, but, um, you know, they're, they're definitely always temporary. Um, there's no, you know, there's no chance of this being a permanent or even persistent thing. And so that did it for me. And I was like, okay, cool. And I took, yeah, I took the first and only pill on March the 1st um, this year. Just one pill? One, one milligram pill of finasteride. Um, so when you took that, I mean, did you start experiencing side effects like almost immediately or did you just decide I'm, I'm kind of, you kind of get scared and say, you know what, I just don't want to do this anymore. Or, or what was your, I guess, what was the outcome? Yeah, bit of both. I, I, I did. Yeah. I got side effects pretty, pretty much immediately within a few, few hours. I noticed a, a few things, um, that being like the, the set, the sexual side effects that people had mentioned and I'd heard about, but that I thought were temporary, mm-hmm. um, happened pretty much immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and then I got scared and I, I kind of put it to the side. Um, I didn't throw it in the bin yet. Um, but I put it to the side and then it was, it was after that night when I couldn't sleep all night and my heart was going at like a million miles an hour. And I was like shaking in bed and like I was, I had like a cold sweat and, mm-hmm. and my left testicle started really hurting, mm-hmm. hurting a lot. And I was like, oh, okay, actually, I'm going to just throw this out right now. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for it, for it all away. Mm-hmm. Um, and then started to have a bit of a panic and, and look online um, deeper than I'd sort of looked already. Cause I thought, you know, I thought I could trust what I'd been told by medical professionals. Of course uh, we all did. Yep. Yeah. And um, it, yeah, it was, yeah, some real, some real horror stories out there, um, of course. And yeah, things f- from that point on, you know, my life is uh, every aspect of my life has completely changed. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So what are your what are your current symptoms then? Uh, currently, I mean, I'd say like, yeah, there's like 30, 40 odd symptoms. Um, and the the only changes have been, I think, like maybe like two or three of them have improved from from then. But, I mean, so. Uh, um, well, I, I crashed. Um, I experienced what was known as like a crash after about two weeks. So I thought I was improving and getting back to kind of to normal sure. in the first two weeks. And then all of this hit me about two weeks after I took that one pill. Mm-hmm. So um, just severe insomnia that wasn't helped by any medication, mm-hmm. uh, constant suicidal ideation. Mm-hmm. Um constant like physical anxiety symptoms and like a a big spike in all my like previous kind of anxiety issues so like I was having panic attacks constantly uh severe like depression low low mood no motivation anhedonia like inability to feel things properly like emotion at all uh brain fog an inability to concentrate or remember stuff properly or think properly at all um and then yeah sexually not only was I like impotent at this point um so not just like you know erectile dysfunction um I watched my penis literally shrink in front of my eyes basically um Mm -hmm. yeah atrophy of the penis and and the testicles um completely numb as well um yeah like complete loss of libido, bad testicular pain and penile pain, frequent mm-hmm. urination, mm-hmm. pain while I'm urinating. And like, yeah, and then the rest of my body, um, my heart rate, my resting heart rate was just like, seemed dangerously high. It was just, um, and irregular heartbeat problems as well. Um, complete like appetite suppression, I couldn't eat. 
at first um and my, my the weight just dropped off i lost like 10 kilograms in in a few weeks yeah uh, and that wasn't you know that that looked like it was just not that i had much before but it looked like it was all muscle that i was losing not not um not fat um and then that kind of i realized that was the case because i just had the worst like joint and muscle pains across my whole body mm-hmm. and yeah um, my body just looks so different immediately right the way right. the way the way the fat on my body is distributed is mm-hmm. like all just completely different like i look like a different person um yeah. so many skin problems uh literally i had like some dry skin before this but then now i've just got full-blown seborrheic dermatitis and the thing with that as well is you can't um i can't use any products to help with my seborrheic dermatitis any shampoos or things that will help with that because mm-hmm. a lot of them are you know like anti-androgenic or whatever so they're anti-androgenic in the body you know yeah so um i've just i mean i'm like using baby shampoo at the moment i'm too scared like i'm just i'm too scared to 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 use normal products i'm scared about everything i put in my body of course now like as i'm sure we all are um that have this condition um what else uh crushing chronic fatigue Mm -hmm. literally just feeling i mean i've been bedridden for most of the time for the last four months Mm. like completely um stomach problems you know gi issues uh yeah i just there's so there's more as well i just i'm trying to think but i mean yeah that's the main the main stuff um any one of those symptoms will be life-changing obviously you know and you've got on its own yeah yeah you know yeah so how has that um ultimately affected your life i think you were telling me earlier you were um you were a college student and you had to drop out I've not dropped out, but I've um I've I've put it off for a year. And I mean, I'm not sure that I'm gonna be able to do it in a year either. You know, I I've deferred it for a year in the hope that I get a little bit better in a year, but no one knows with this disease, no one knows what's gonna happen. Right. Um but yeah, I mean I I, I wasn't able to do anything. I can't, I can't go out, I can't enjoy simple things like hanging out with my friends. Um yeah the, i mean cognitively I, I wasn't able to function to do my work but also physically I, I wasn't able to especially the first couple of months but still now like i can't do much like i'm just in a lot of pain a lot of the time mm-hmm. and i'm just the fatigue is crushing it's right. just like and and then the way it's affected my mental health makes it impossible to do anything anyway right right it's, yeah 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 yeah, it's, it's incredible, man. I mean, and and like I said, these symptoms just compound, they pile on top of each other. You know, it's not just one thing, it's 30 things for a lot of different people. And I think everybody thinks that, you know, post asteroid syndrome is just sexual symptoms, right? It goes way, way beyond that. You know, if I just had sexual dysfunction, I can at least, you know, function in my everyday life at my job, with my career, with socializing. But this takes every aspect that makes you you, and it just completely destroys it. You know, yeah. it robs the most basic human elements. You mentioned anhedonia, I think. Uh, for a lot yeah. of people, it's like one of the worst things you can't, you can't connect with people. You can't enjoy anything, anything, uh, you know, pl- pleasurable, you know, you, you can't enjoy going for a walk, going to the gym, socializing, going to the movies. I mean, all these things that you used to really en- enjoy, you can't feel anymore, you know, yeah. uh, for somebody that hasn't gone through that. I mean, how do you explain that? That's not just simple depression either. Again, I mean, I've dealt with depression myself in the past. This is completely, completely different, obviously. So, uh, it's life altering, you know, it really, really is, man. In every way, yeah, it's, yeah. Right, right. And I mean, tell, telling p- people as well, especially as someone, yeah, that has had some issues with my mental health before this, people just, you know, people just assume that it's the same old, like, uh, and that I'm making a big deal out of things. And then actual medical professionals tell me that it's in my head. And it's like, I, I watched my penis shrink in front of my eyes. Right. I, I I can't I'm in agony like all the time in that area of my body is that not concerning like that that's not normal that you can't cause that by feeling a bit sad or anxious right absolutely one of these changes to my body that like it's clearly the pill that Mm -hmm. did that Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. How do you, how do you as a medical professional tell a patient that this is all in their head when you can see a physical change with their body, you know? Um, I mean, I, I lost 20 pounds myself when I came off the medication within the first six weeks, my skin got super loose. You know, I, I watched my face change, my, my body change, everything about it in, in such a short period of time. And other people saw it, but doctors, <laughs> they're the only ones that didn't see it. They wanted to deny it, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really, really discouraging. And I think that's honestly where a lot of the, for a lot of people, the suicidal ideation comes into play there because they're not believed. They're discredited. They're told this is all yeah. right. you're, you're gaslit. You feel like you're crazy, you know? Uh, and then who do you turn to at that point if doctors aren't going to help you, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. So how many doctors, I mean, have you got, you mentioned you went to a doctor, have you gone to several doctors or just the one? So, yeah. So I started off, um, I immediately told my, my GP, my, um, in, in the UK, we've got, we're lucky to have free healthcare here. And so, uh, you know, I made use of that at first and I told my, my GP and they, um, they just completely disbelieved me. Um, I mean, I think it took a few appointments with them before they would even do the blood test that I said I needed um, wow. and was told later by a professional that I needed to get done. Um, and then so I was like, OK, well, I'm, I'm not going to get any help here. So I started seeing private healthcare specialists. I saw multiple urologists, multiple andrologists, some of the best in in the country as well. Mm -hmm. um, I saw an endocrinologist, mm -hmm. um, seeing, you know, uh, people to help with my mental health and stuff. But yeah, almost all of the, and I've had like countless, I've seen countless different specialists and like mm -hmm. the majority of them have um, just disagreed with me that it's even possible for this to happen. Right. Uh, I think there's enough, like, obviously, we're still waiting on study results, but there's clearly enough evidence to show that this is a real, very real thing. Um, but yeah, 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 it's, I don't know. Um, there, yeah, and, and the ones that the ones that do believe me, and, and even want to help, they, they kind of don't know how and I've, I've been t told, you know, when you go to a doctor, a lot of the time, you know, you kind of feel some at least some comfort all the time in the knowledge that they're probably going to have some kind of a solution or an idea for the problem you've got i've just i've been told i don't know um by so many but like yeah that's better than better than them saying it's in my head and i'm being delusional at least at least they care um and but th those ones that don't know you know they've run through options of different medications and, and things i could try and I've said, well, I can't try this and I can't try that because that's known. It can it can make people with this condition worse. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, then I don't know what to offer you. Right, right. Yeah. I've had doctors try to give me testosterone, a uh, bunch of other supplements, different prescriptions, and I'm afraid to take anything because I don't know how my body's going to react to it. You know? Yeah. Because uh, if if in your case you take one pill and your body just goes completely haywire, I mean, what else could happen if you take something else on top of that too? You know. And, you know, you mentioned too, you go, you went to several different doctors. I mean, you at least feel a little bit, I wouldn't say relieved is the right word, but a little more relieved when a doctor says, okay, I believe you, but there's nothing we can do about it. At least it's kind of acknowledged at that point. Yeah. You feel heard. You feel like they they, they you hear do. you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause I went to Johns Hopkins, uh, which is a major medical facility over here in the U S and uh, the doctor there, I talked to a dermatologist. She said, hey, I believe you. She's like, I know post finasteride syndrome exists. She just said, but we don't have enough evidence to really support all this yet. We haven't done the research. We don't have the data for all this. Yeah. And I, asked her, I said, do you think this is reversible? And she kind of hesitated. She's like, you know what? I, I think it is. She's like, but it's going to require some, some serious research. So I, I didn't walk out of there feeling great, but it's like, you know what? At least somebody is acknowledging this because at that point I already gone to, to like three or four different, or not dermatologists, uh, three or four different neurologists. I went to two dermatologists locally in my area and they all just said finasteride can't cause these symptoms that you claim to be having, you know? Yeah, it's, it's there's, the, there's the evidence out there, you know, there's enough of us suffering with this to... Um... I don't know. I don't know how someone can be in 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 the field that they're in and and not um, acknowledge this illness at this point. Um, right. Right. Yeah.
Well, the, the hair loss industry is like a $5 billion industry too. And a lot of people take finasteride safely. And that's where I try to be unbiased about this. You know, if somebody were to ask me, if I take this medication, am I going to have the same symptoms as you? I tell them probably not. You'll probably be fine taking this. You'll probably watch your hair loss stop. You'll probably even see regrowth. And if you, if you get symptoms, they'll probably go away once you quit taking it. But if they don't, yeah. who are you going to turn to yeah. and what are you going to do? You know, you can't turn to doctors. They don't know what's going on. And if they do, they can't help you. And if you try to turn to some, you know, to social media influencers who claim to have the cure or who claim or who deny even, you know, post asteroid syndrome, they're going to gaslight you under the false pretense that they actually care about you. This is just your mental health. And they're going to blame that, you know, and at that point, what, what do you do? You just feel you feel lost. You know, you have nowhere to turn. So it's a really, a really horrible position to be in, to be suffering so immensely and to not be believed by anybody. And then to be gaslit again by doctors and social media influencers and to uh, see some of the mocking online, like I've seen, we've all seen from time to time, obviously. Um, it's There's so many layers to this and people just don't realize it's not just the symptoms, it's everything else that goes on top of this. It, it's again, it's, yeah. it's, it's the gaslighting, it's how this affects your everyday life, your social life, your hobbies, everything that makes you you is essentially just eradicated. And in a matter of a day or two, you know? Yeah. So I know how uh, how devastating this can be. Um, have you told your friends or family about this? Yeah, I've told, um, yeah, a lot of my um, my family know. And then um, all of my close friends um, know. But I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's difficult to talk about with anyone. Um, it's difficult to talk about with anyone at all because... Um, yeah the response I, I never know what response i'm gonna get and you know pe the people that care about me in my life are obviously concerned for me but um there's there's only a, a couple that i can say um even fully that fully believe the the level of, of what i'm going through um sure. and sure. yeah and what and what do, what do you say to someone going through this much anyway like that um you know because yeah unless you experience it how 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 can you know Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. You can offer your sympathy, obviously, but I mean, if, if you don't really know what the feelings like, what do you say? You know, I've got my yeah. parents who believe me. I've got my fiance who believes me, uh, but they can only do so much to comfort me, obviously. And, you know, for me, I went from being a very, you know, high functioning person. You know, I was very successful in my, my everyday life, my social life, my career, my profession, everything. And to kind of go from that to being where I'm at now, it's, it's devastating because you watch your entire life fall apart over just taking a handful of pills. And in your case, just taking one pill, it's, it's completely, yeah. unfair, uh, completely unjustified. And I'm really sorry to hear you going through this, man. Um, it's, Great to hear you are as well. Yeah, yeah. We, we all are. And I think there's something liberating about coming out and talking about this publicly, at least for me. Yeah. Um, it was very freeing for me in some sense, and it brought a little bit of relief, at least that that psychological hold that you feel like post finasteride syndrome has on you um, when you come out and you just tell everyone, this is what I'm dealing with, and, and I've had these really personal, intimate issues, these sexual issues, these neurological issues, these physical issues, and uh, yeah, again, there's there's something um, just liberating about all that. So again, really appreciate you come on, coming on and telling your story. I hope you end up feeling a little bit of relief from this. Um, I think I will, yeah. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that, man. So uh, you kind of already answered this, but uh, do you feel like you received, you know, proper, the proper information before taking this drug? You know, would you feel like you were aware of, of these potential symptoms or these persistent symptoms? Uh, yeah, not at all. And not only was I not made aware of them, I asked about the potential for that myself and then was told that's a load of rubbish, that's, that it's not true. Right. So it's not them. Um, not informing me properly it's them trying to stop me being informed on it um because they they want to sell me this stuff um, right. they want to make money off the sale of this stuff um that's how i feel about it anyway i feel like i was actually lied to not just not just it wasn't just someone that was negligent of the facts it was someone that knows what can happen i believe this anyway that they knew and yeah. And they still wanted to give me anyway. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. You And why wouldn't you believe a doctor, a person in that authoritative position, right? And I mean, you would assume yeah, exactly would be necessary to inform you on uh, what could potentially happen. So uh, I hear that a lot. You know, people listen to their doctors and, and I hear other people blaming 
you know, the victims, the patients of this saying, well, you should have done more research. Well, you know, I'm telling you, I did plenty of research myself. I researched that, you know, the, the pill for six months. And you really have to go in deep on Google to really figure out, to find out some of these stories that you hear, right? The surface level things are the erectile dysfunction, you know, the, the low libido, the testicular pain. You don't hear about how life altering, you know, some of these symptoms can be until you really dig deep and, and look on the Reddit pages or you look on Propecia Health and you realize that these people are suffering. And even then you, you read some of these stories, they just seem so unbelievable. You don't, you don't think that's even possible. Yeah. But e even if you didn't do all the research beforehand, you, you still like people have, tr they put trust in, right. you know, doc doctors and medical professionals. You should not be blamed they, they got to their, yeah, they, they got to their position for a reason. They're held in high regard. You yeah. trust them, yeah. right? People trust them. So yeah, I trusted what I was told. And yep. I shouldn't have done. Right. I, I did too. You know, I you, you trust yeah. them that you speak to. And um, you don't assume they're going to lie or not uh, be more open about this. Um, and again, it's handed out like it's candy. It's so easy to get a prescription for finasteride. Yeah. I see a lot of people all the time too online who are very pro finasteride say, don't even do a whole lot of research into this because you're going to give yourself the nocebo effect. And then you're going to have these side effects. That, it's ridiculous, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, when I hear that, um, just, it makes me so angry. The whole nocebo effect thing. Um, yeah. It makes me so angry. Yeah, I knew I was going to get, uh, you know, testicular shrinkage or all these other things going on or these body changes or loose skin or cognitive issues. And I just thought my way into that. I had no idea these were even potential symptoms. And a lot, most people I talked to, they had no idea these things could happen, you know. Um, and that's why you have some people who, who take it for, for months, if not years, and they're experiencing these side effects or these symptoms. And they keep taking the medication because they don't even assume that the medication could cause these things. And, and when they ask people that they're, they're told it doesn't and you're just you're just freaking out about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. It's, there's no there's no winning. There is absolutely no winning with this. You know, there's nothing you can do. Um, it's unfortunate, but the tide is changing at this point. It's really great to see how many people are stepping up and how many people want to go public and, and talk about this because they're tired. Yeah. They're sick and tired of being gaslit. They're sick and tired of having their lives completely ruined from taking a simple cosmetic drug that is told that you're told is safe. You know, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. So um, we are making progress. I, I hope you're able to, um, you know, see that yourself. And I hope the uh, the audience is able to see that as well. There's a lot of great things happening right now in regards to scientific research and understanding. And and just, again, with people stepping up and going public about this. More and more people are becoming aware. I've talked to, um, not recently, but I talked to a couple of doctors at one point who said, yeah, we've at least heard of post finasteride syndrome. We don't know a whole lot about it, but the medical community is starting to wake up. And I think it's important that... Uh, you know, we hold on to that because that's really important, you know? Definitely, yeah. Um, before I let you go, Sam, there are, do you have any closing statements or anything else you want to say to the audience before we wrap up here? Uh, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, we've kind of touched on it already, but um, yeah, I think I, I chose to do this interview because like it's so easy for people to look at the stories online about um, post finasteride syndrome and dismiss it as people being delusional but like you know actually with these stories with people with people doing these interviews you can you know put a face to like we, we are both real people that this has happened to um and i just i just don't understand why people could somehow think that someone going you know someone would um say all of this crazy stuff um that's happening to them you know some of it's really embarrassing to talk about as well humiliating why anyone would say that publicly if it wasn't actually happening to them why the hell would anyone try and put themselves through through that humiliation if they weren't going through all of the things that they say they're going through and like yeah we can't um we can't just be ignored forever. I think, um, yeah, Merck and and all these companies that give out the pills at the moment, they're, you know, they're getting away with murder right now. I mean, literally, in my opinion, you know, people are losing their lives to this drug. And um, I don't know, I, I think, yeah, I don't think they can ignore us forever. We need to keep pushing um, and speaking up about this. And if anyone, is struggling with the idea of speaking up about this 
um just yeah you're not alone like there's loads of us unfortunately um with this now and um i think it would be really good um not only to to help yourself feel feel like your voice is heard but also it helps raise awareness which is what we need because this is just the only reason this is still going on is because there's just not enough awareness right now um because this stuff should be banned <laughs> yeah I couldn't say it better myself. You're absolutely right. Uh, we have strength in numbers here. We have a lot of people, thousands, who are suffering at this point. And uh, when you put a face to it, it really changes the uh, the perception, obviously. It's easy to listen to these stories in online forums, but when you actually see somebody face-to-face -face on a camera talking about this, it really changes the game. So, uh, Sam, we really appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you so much, and we'll see no, you Thank later. you. Thank you.